In this video, I'm going to show you adjusting the buffer or block size in Reaper. So our buffer or block size determines how much time our processor has to get audio in and out of our system. It's measured in samples and it goes something like this. 16, 32, and 64 samples are considered ultra low latency. 128 and 256 samples are considered low latency. 512, 1024, and 2048 samples will optimize processing over latency. Basically, the lower the buffer or block size, the more responsive our system will be. But it makes it harder for a computer to process that audio, resulting in pops, clicks, or glitches. And if we have a higher buffer or block size, we'll be able to process more tracks and more CPU intense plugins, but we won't be able to record while hearing ourselves through Reaper correctly, through the excessive delay or latency. In other words, if you try to sing or play guitar, while the buffer is set really high and monitored through Reaper, you're going to hear your performance much later than you perform it. Now, if you have an audio interface that allows you to monitor directly and not monitor through Reaper, notice direct monitoring or similar, this latency won't matter as you're monitoring direct. Now, to see our settings, we can go to our preferences. Control P on the PC, Command Comma on the Mac, and go under Device. Or we could just choose it over here. Audio device settings. It's the same thing. So I'm using a Mac. If you're using a PC, this page might look a bit different. But you should have this setting right here request block size. And if your interface comes with software or a driver, you could probably set your buffer or block size in there. And by default, in Reaper, this will be turned off and it's going to use the buffer or block size from your software. Or driver. But if you want to override it, we could do that right here. Just choose Request Block Size, and it should overwrite your driver or software. And by default, Reaper usually sets this to 512, giving us a perfect balance between recording with low latency and mixing with more tracks and plugins. But I tend to keep this at about 128 to give me low latency during recording. So we won't hear a significant delay in the performance. But let's see how this project performs. I have a project set up here, and let's hear what it sounds like. I remember hearing songs Decades old, but it doesn't matter Notice, we're not hearing any glitches. Let's go up here to the View menu and choose the Performance Meter, where we can see how our CPU is handling the performance of this project. What we want to focus on right over here is any overruns which will cause glitches or pops in the audio. Let's hear it again. We're not seeing any. We can also see how much RAM is being used. But now let's compare this if we change the buffer or block size to be really small. Let's make it 16 samples which will make the latency incredibly low, but let's notice what happens. I remember hearing songs Decades old, but it doesn't matter As you can hear, it's full of glitches. Let's make it a bit higher. Let's try 32. I remember let's reset songs. the graph. Decades old. I'm still hearing glitches and pops, but not as bad. Let's go a bit higher, 64. Reset a graph. Now we can see we're not getting any overruns and no glitches or pops. But it doesn't matter. So this is the lowest setting I would probably use to record in this project. Although we can go a bit higher, which is where I had it set at 128. 
reset the graph. And again, no overruns, glitches, or pops in the audio. Decades old, but it doesn't matter. So 128 samples is a pretty good buffer or block size for recording into this project, as it's still considered low latency, so performers won't hear too much delay while they're performing their parts. And it's also high enough, so we're not hearing any glitches, pops, or overruns. So it's all about finding that balance based on the project we're working with at the time. Now, if we want to see any possible overruns, we can go to our transport and right click and choose this option right here, which is going to flash the transport yellow on any possible problems. So we can turn this on, which is off by default. Let's switch our buffer to 32. Now you can see down here any possible problems. I remember her in songs. And we could see there's a bunch. Old, but it doesn't matter. So you could see it right down here visually if there's any problems with our buffer or block size setting. And in this case, we need to raise it. So in general, during recording, I like to keep this at about 128. But for mixing, I tend to make it a bit higher starting at about 1024, which will give us more headroom to run any plugins or many tracks during mixdown, and of course, no glitches or pops. Now we also have this buffering preference tab where we could tweak some other buffering settings. None of this is gonna affect latency, but it can affect how responsive our system is when working with Reaper. By default, Reaper's gonna auto detect the number of CPU cores we have, but if you want to choose it yourself, you could turn off this option and type it in here. Maybe use less cores for Reaper if you prefer. Most of these I leave at default. But if you want to tweak some things, you can adjust the media buffer size here. This uses RAM and CPU to avoid having to wait for a hard drive to load our media. For systems with slower disks, we should set this higher to get a more responsive performance. But if our hard drives are pretty fast, we could set this lower and let Reaper work directly from them. And we could also choose how full the media buffers should be before starting playback. Lower numbers will give us a faster response time. But play around with these two to see if you get a better experience. So that's pretty much it. That's adjusting the buffer or block size in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.